AMD just launched its Radeon RX 5600 XT. NVIDIA, not to be outdone, just reduced pricing on its 2060 line. The benchmarks are in, the pricing's in, the cards are available, but the question remains. Which one should you buy? Maybe neither of them. Coming up in this edition of Best Graphics Cards for the Money. Welcome to PC Builder. I'm Jason. I'm super excited today because this is the first episode of Best Graphics Card for the Money for the channel. And what a fantastic time to launch it. AMD's releasing cards, Nvidia's cutting prices. The whole graphics card market has been turned upside down in the last six months. What card should you buy? By the end of this video, you're going to have a very firm understanding of, based on what you're looking to do, the best graphics card for the money. Okay, before we jump into it, first I want to say a big thank you to everybody who supported the channel so far. This is our fourth video. We just crossed the 100 subscriber mark. So excited about it. So please, if you like this kind of content, if you want to support us putting out more kinds of content aimed at ordinary PC builders like yourself, please like the video, click the subscribe button, and click the bell icon to keep us going. Okay, with that out of the way, let's jump into it. We're going to briefly cover the RX 5600 XT launch. We're going to briefly cover NVIDIA's price cuts and a little bit about the EVGA 2060 KO model, which has some amazing performance to it if you're looking for a workstation performance. Then we're going to jump into the various use cases and we're going to identify for what are the best graphics cards for the money depending on the resolution you're looking to hit. So the RX 5600 XT launched by AMD just a couple of days ago as I'm shooting this video is now out on store shelves, so to speak, electronic store shelves at Amazon and Newegg for about $180. And the performance with all the benchmarks in now and the card being overclocked at the last minute by AMD, the card runs almost par for par with a RTX 2060, maybe slightly ahead in some games, slightly behind in others. Overall, maybe about a 2% performance difference. You'd never know the difference. So, of course, NVIDIA responded by reducing their prices on the 2060. It now runs for about $300, though most of the cards I'm seeing are still $310, $320. A couple of them now on Newegg have come down with some mail-in rebates and things of that nature. Okay, let's talk briefly about the overall graphics card market because over the last six months, it's completely turned upside down. It used to be for many years that AMD ruled the budget category. So the entry-level graphics cards all the way up to just about the mid-tier. You didn't really want to consider any of the NVIDIA cards because they were kind of garbage for the money. And AMD completely ruled that roost. But when you got into the mid-tier, that's where NVIDIA took over all the way up to the high end. AMD has made several failed attempts over the last couple of years to break into that mid-tier. And NVIDIA has made several failed attempts to break into the lower tier. However... This year, they both succeeded at the same exact time. So NVIDIA, with the introduction of the GTX 1650 Supercard, not the 1650, that's a pile of garbage, the 1650 Supercard, is now taking over the lower end market, especially with the effectively the failed launch of the AMD RX 5500 XT series. AMD's done a lot right this year, so every now and then they're going to screw one up, and they've kind of screwed this one up. Still salvageable, but as I'm recording this right now, I wouldn't consider those cards. On the other side of things, we've got AMD launching their RX 5700 series and now the 5600 series, and they've really broken into the mid-tier market that NVIDIA dominated for the longest time, to the point where unless you're streaming or doing productivity software like video editing, I can't really find a, an, a, a, an NVIDIA card that I could recommend for that mid-tier unless you want a 2080 Ti. How do we do best cards for the money here? A lot of places, they're just going to say, if you've got $100 to spend, buy this. If you got $200, buy that. I don't understand that at all. Along with the CPU, the graphics card is one of the most important components you're going to buy when putting your PC together. Instead of figuring out ahead of time what your budget is, figure out what do you want to get out of it and then budget accordingly. So we're going to list them a little differently. You'll see a spreadsheet um, <clears throat> over there. 
you'll see a spreadsheet up here. Now I'm going to include a link to that down in the description below. I've gone ahead and ranked all of these cards depending on what you're doing, how much you have to spend, and what you're looking to pull off. I've got a graphics card recommendation for you. Again, down, linked in the description. It's a Google Doc. You'll be able to view it. Let's get into gaming now. So what card do you need? All depends on what the resolution you're trying to hit and the refresh rate of that monitor. How many frames per second are you trying to deliver at what resolution? Many people use a 1080p monitor and 60 frames per second. Some people are looking for a 1080p monitor with a 144 hertz refresh rate, so they're looking to get 144 frames per second, particularly in competitive first-person shooter titles like Call of Duty, things of that nature, Overwatch, etc. And then, of course, some people want to jump up in resolution to 1440p or 4K and game at those resolutions as well. We're going to go through each and every one of them. So for those of you with a 1080p monitor with a 60 hertz refresh rate, you're looking to get 60 frames per second. The basement bargain card that I can recommend here is the RX 570 4 gigabyte card. This is a, really it's a fantastic card. It's about, what, two or plus years old, or frankly, it's a refresh of the 470, which is really a refresh of the 70, because it goes back and back and back. This Polaris line has been around forever, but frankly, it's an only bit of goodie. It'll play most games today in 1080p, 60 frames per second, at least medium to high details. I would not recommend buying a card for less than a 578. Don't get a 560, don't get a 550, don't get a GTX 1050 Ti or a 1650 non-super card. Those are all trash. Don't spend any money unless you're at least getting an RX 570. Now, that being said, the other card I could recommend if you're comfortable buying used parts, you can still get an RX 580, slightly better performing than this card, on the used market on eBay for about $120, though those cards are rapidly drying up and the price is increasing. The card that I'm actually going to recommend that you buy is going to be a NVIDIA GTX 1650 Super. Make sure you get the Super, not the non-Super. The non-Super is a piece of garbage. The 1650 Super is actually a very different card than the old 1650. They completely redesigned it, unlike some of the other Super cards where they just upgraded the memory. So this card for $160 is going to run just about every title, 1080p, 60 frames per second in high to ultra details. The other great thing about this, yes, you could go buy an older 590, a 580. I would not go touch the older cards if you can afford to buy this one right here. This is new architecture, brand new card, likely to be supported for many, many games in the future. Those older Polaris cards, They've had their time, they did their duty, but it's, you know, it's 2020 now and it's, it's time to take the next step. I don't recommend the RX 5500 XT cards at the current price point. While performance-wise they're very similar to the GTX 1650 Super, they just cost a lot more money and you don't, the features on the NVIDIA cards are better. So anytime AMD and NVIDIA come head-to-head -head at the same price point with the same performance, NVIDIA wins because the NVEC encoder is better. They just have a better feature set. AMD is working to bring that up to snuff. Their Adrenaline 2020 package is, you know, it's a step in the right direction, but they're just not there yet. So it's something I cannot in good faith recommend. Finally, if you want a no compromises, definitely hits 60 frames per second in ultra detail in almost every game right now at 1080p, 60 frames per second, then you want to go for the GTX 1660 Super or Ti. They're effectively the same card. Find the cheapest one you can. I would get one with at least two fans on it though. There's a couple single fan models. They'll probably run just fine. You may be experience a little bit of extra noise because of that. If that doesn't bother you, go ahead and get one of those if they're on sale. Otherwise, I'd definitely get a two fan one. MSI's got a lot of good cards. Ace. Most of the GTX 1660 Super and TR cards, the cards are absolutely fine. So that's your no compromises at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Now let's talk 1440p gaming at 60 frames a second. 
Again, so we've gone up in resolution. We're staying with the same refresh rate on the monitor, same number of frames we're trying to deliver, just at a higher resolution. So as a result, all the card recommendations are gonna go up. Now we're in solidly into the mid tier of cards. The minimum card I would recommend for this right now may not last several years in the future, but at least right now, the 1660 Super or 1660 Ti. Go ahead, I just described those cards. Just find the cheapest one available, Ti or Super. That'll meet your needs currently. However, however, looking to a card that's got a little bit more of a future to it, I think you want to look at the brand new RX 5600 XT. There's a number of really good ones on the market. Sapphire's got one that you've got the new Power Color Red Dragon. These these cards have a great cooling, um, a great cooler on them. Overall, fantastic performance. About 2060 levels of performance for 20 or 30 bucks less. However, if you're looking for a no compromises card in this category, 1440p, 60 frames per second, I would personally pick up a Radeon RX 5700. These are fantastic cards. Uh, Sapphire's got a, a number of good cards. Power Color's got a number of good cards. The performance on these is stronger than the 5600 XT. And in many cases, like this card for instance, the price is not that much more. It's only $310 on Amazon right now. Now let's get into 1080p gaming at 144 frames per second minimum. That's 144 hertz refresh rate on your monitor. Who wants this high of a refresh rate? Competitive first person shooter gamers. Okay, frame rates matter in those kinds of games. The difference between being able to headshot somebody in a game like Overwatch or Call of Duty depends greatly on when the frame is delivered to your screen and you click the button, is that person still in that place? Or because of the slowness of your monitor, are they actually somewhere else even though you're seeing them right there? So if you're a competitive first person shooter title player and you have a 144 Hertz 1080p monitor, the, the minimum card I'm gonna recommend is again the 1660 Super. Although I'm gonna put a caveat in here, I don't know how much longer this card is going to be a good solution for this. So at a minimum, I think you wanna be looking at an RX 5600 XT, but more than likely at an RX 5700. And again, we've gone through, there's a number of these cards. They start around 300, 310 on sale. Regularly find good cards for $330, $340. Um, I think this is probably the best place to spend your money and the best value for your money. If you wanna go up to absolutely no compromises, then I would recommend at a minimum an RX 5700 XT. And here I think the AMD cards have a clear advantage over the Nvidia cards because they've got the frame boost where when you're moving your pointer, your mouse pointer, really quickly, it will actually slightly reduce the resolution in order to maintain that high frame rate for competitive titles. To me, if this is your jam, you want to buy an AMD, AMD card and the best one you're going to get RX 5700 XT. Now, warning, there's a couple of these cards you absolutely do not want to buy under any circumstance. Um, the three fan Asus one is one of them. They have fixed some of the other cards. Get a card by Sapphire. This Radeon that I'm showing you right now, this Gigabyte uh, rather, is, a, is another good card. Make sure you get one of the good cards. I'm going to have links in the description down below. Now we're going to talk the top of the top. We're talking high frame rates in a 1440p or 60 frame per second gaming at 4K resolution. So currently you need a lot of horsepower to run these games at those resolutions. Can definitely be done though. The minimum card I'm going to recommend is either a 5700 XT like the Gigabyte that we're, I just showed you or a 2070 Super. I'm not I'm not big on the 2070 Super because it doesn't have that much more performance than the 5700 XT for $100 more. Frankly, at this point, the more power we're pushing, it's going to become exorbitantly expensive. So if you've already got an i9-9900K and you've got you know 64 gigs of 
super fast memory and you've got all the trimmings and you're just looking for the best money can buy, I'm gonna recommend that you get either a 2080 Super or a 2080 Ti. Those cards start at about $1,100 so. So for most human beings, I think the Radeon RX 5700 XT is probably where you're going to end up. Maybe the 2070 Super, possibly the 2080 Super. That's the video for today. This was really exciting doing our very first best graphics cards for the money. Please remember, help us out, brand new channel. Please like the video, subscribe, and click the bell button to get notified for new videos coming up. We're gonna be launching this kind of content on a regular basis every single week, and I'm really excited to grow the channel with your help. Thank you so much for your help in the past. That's it. Happy gaming, happy video editing, and happy streaming, everyone. We'll catch you on the next one.